all them no longer feel the pain Like Lord surprise them thunder, Dexter, Lord anything Let's salute those legend kings of Calypso King Leo, Viva, Sling and King Paul Ferro Big up the boat racing, it makes me bet unique Cause we think it's day and night and every day of the week So let's jump and prance and go on mad This is 40 years Bounce and wine like you got mad This is 40 years Raise up your flags and wave your rocks This is 40 years Make it great so we can grab This is 40 years Bingo! 
from such a Deep of the boat racing it makes me bet unique Cause we thing is day and night and every day of the week So let's jump and prance and go and vibe This is 40 years Bums and wine like you got man This is 40 years Raise up your flags and wave your rocks This is 40 years Make it rain so we can grab This is 40 years Excellency the Governor, Mr. Tim Foy and Dr. Foy, Premier and Minister of Finance, Economic Development, Investment, Commerce, Tourism and Information Technology, Mr. Victor F. Banks, Honorable Minister of Home Affairs, Mrs. Cora Richardson Hodge, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Ms. Pamavon Webster. Bishop of the Northeastern Caribbean and Aruba, the Right Reverend L. Errol Brooks and Mrs. Brooks, Pastor Howard Simon of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on Anguilla, Anguilla Day Honorees 2020, distinguished guests, members of the media, Permanent Secretary, Economic Development, Investment, Commerce, Tourism, and Information Technology, Mr. Larry Franklin. To all gathered here and those tuned in via Radio Anguilla and the World Wide Web, I bid you good morning on this day of commemoration of 53 years 
of the Anguilla Revolution. I now call on Pastor Howard Simon, pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to deliver the invocation. Pastor Simon. I invite us to stand as we pray. Almighty Father, great God of the universe, how marvelous, magnificent, and majestic is your name in all the earth. We praise you, we magnify you, we celebrate you, because you are the high and holy one, you are the great and glorious one, you are the marvelous and magnificent one. You are the governor of governors. You are the premier of premiers, the leader of leaders, the king of kings and lord of lords. We praise you because you hold this entire universe in your hands. It's by you that we live, move, and have our beings. We thank you for your favor, your marvelous mercy, and your generous grace upon this great little island of Anguilla. You blessed us beyond measure. Not only have you providence and protected us, but your mercy and favor uh, have been so amazing that we praise you and we celebrate you. Only three persons in this fair land has, have been infected by that deadly coronavirus, and all of them have recovered. We thank you and we praise you because you have been merciful, you have been good to us. More than that, we thank you for our proud history. We thank you for the gift of freedom and liberty. We thank you for all the wonderful blessings you've bestowed upon this country over the past. But we pray, God, that our blessings may be even more and the sun would shine even brighter in the future so that our greatness would not lie in history, but in our future. We pray your blessings upon every single village, every single home, every single person in this island. We pray, God, that you would bless this territory now and in the future more than ever before. May you protect our ports. May you flourish our fields. May you increase our industry. May you protect your people. We pray, God, that your blessings would be so great upon this territory that what you would do for us now and in the future would be so much brighter, so much greater than our blessings in the past that every generation would be better and stronger and wiser because of the glory and blessings of God. We pray your blessings upon our leaders and every single stakeholder in this community and pray, oh God, that we would be a God-fearing people. We would look to you, the author and finisher of our fate, and we would praise you all the days of our lives. Thank you for blessing this service. Thank you for blessing this nation. Thank you for blessing us all as we give all things into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you for so ably engaging God on our behalf this morning, Pastor Simon. I now call on Miss Kalida Hull to sing the national anthem and the Anguilla national song. Miss Hull. God save our gracious queen, long live our noble queen, God save the queen, send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to save the 
keep her noble and beauteous. She stands midst the sea. O land of the happy, a heaven will make thee our lives and love. We give unto thee with heart and soul will Build a nation proud, strong and free. We love her, hold her, dare to our hearts for eternity. Let truth and right our banner be. We'll march ever on. Mighty will make her. Long may she prosper. God grant her leaders wisdom and grace. May glory and honor ever attend her. Firm shall she stand throughout every age with heart and soul will Build a nation proud, strong and free. We love her, hold her, dare to our hearts for eternity. Let truth and right our banner be. We'll march ever on. Let truth and right our banner be. We'll march Thank you, Kalida. I now invite His Excellency the Governor, Mr. Tim Foy, to deliver his Anguilla Day 2020 address. Uh, good morning, everybody, and a very happy Anguilla Day to all Anguillians, wherever you may be, either at home or overseas today. You know, this year we celebrate in circumstances which none of us could have envisaged this time last year, or indeed just some few months ago. Many families across the land are feeling the hardship of lost jobs, separation from their loved ones overseas, and indeed uncertainty due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In one way, though, these circumstances and the way our community has risen to the challenge of COVID-19, to me at least, epitomizes the spirit of Anguilla and the character of you, the Anguillian people. And to my mind, this makes this year's Anguilla Day theme of history, culture, heritage, and identity particularly appropriate. Overcoming hardship and overcoming hardship with dignity through hard work, looking out for one another, perseverance and ingenuity, all underpinned by a deep Christian faith. These are the things which define Anguilla's history 
and which have shaped the culture and identity of you, its people. History shows that Anguilla is no stranger to challenge and hardship. We are not blessed with natural resources, but despite this, generations made a living from the land, the sea, and the salt ponds where a lesser people would have failed. The cultural identity with farming and fishing remain amazingly powerful. So does a strong, strong sense of family and community, characteristics forged in adversity, where those who can help others in need do so, and all pull together as one when necessary. Poverty and lack of opportunity force thousands to seek work on foreign shores, using their talent and their sweat to make a better future for themselves and families back home. And out of that need for work, a diaspora was created, a diaspora that has never lost its sense of identity, its proud sense of heritage, its love of home, and its commitment to reach back to help those at home in times of need, characteristics we saw most recently after the Hurricane Irma. And of course, from that need to venture across the seas comes a rich sailing heritage that lives on strong today. Anguilla's history has been punctuated regrettably by natural and economic disasters, hurricanes, droughts, economic downturns, and now COVID-19. But no matter how hard, sudden, or unexpected the blow, Anguilla got back on its feet, instilling in successive generations a special resilience and a self-belief in the ability to overcome adversity, no matter how daunting the odds may seem. So today, as we recall the events of 53 years ago, and not just then, the challenging months and years that followed, we think back to a time when Anguillians rose to another challenge, a different one, and they did so with little regard for the odds. And they succeeded because they were confident in their cause and their ability to achieve what was just and right, no matter the cost, no matter the hardship. And I can't help but conclude that the confidence the revolutionaries showed that day was born from a heritage and identity hardwired in Anguillians to overcome any challenge. It's in your blood and passed on from generation to generation. So it's with confidence and faith that I know COVID-19 will not beat you or detract Anguilla from its course. The sun will rise each morning and continue to shine on Anguilla until the power far greater than man decides otherwise. We will return to better days and return soon. And with God's good grace, we will be stronger and more resilient than ever. As ever on Anguilla Day, we recall those who have passed on in the year that's been. And along with Dean, I want to pass on uh, my own personal condolences, our condolences, to just a number of those who have died. And it's not an exclusive list, so please forgive anybody we've missed. I want to start with Al Barnett, Mr. B, the guy that got the airport back up and running after Irma. He sadly passed away following a, a fairly prolonged period of uh, illness. Uh, Nurse Colvick Coley, Father Richard Foy, Oliver Cynthia Gums, Joseph Harald de Harrigan, very sadly passed away in 99, didn't quite make the century. I'm sure he'd have danced for it if he had. Uh, Taita Goodwin, tragically in circumstances none of us wish to recall perhaps. Lady Josephine Gums, Irene Lake, passed away aged 105. George Diggy Brooks, John Elliott Brooks, Hope Webster, Wycliffe Richardson, James Leroy Vanterpool, again in tragic circumstances, David Hodge, teacher Omar Richardson, Calvert Carty, Marjorie Vanterpool, Ejanya Christian, and indeed our thoughts to everybody who lost a loved one this year. We'd also like to extend our congratulations to this year's award winners, our honorees. Uh, Leander, glad you, glad you made it. Uh, good to see you. Uh, there he is. Um, posthumous award to, to Wycliffe Richardson. Um, Rosina Brooks and Ursul Webster Brooks. All of you made and have made and continue to make a remarkable contribution to this year's, to this nation's development. Anguilla Day is also an opportunity for us to thank those who work on our behalf and keep us safe, particularly in these difficult times. So uh, my thanks to appreciation to the members of the police, prisons and fire services who put themselves at risk to protect us. I think a shout out to our outstanding team at the Health Authority and the Ministry of Health, whose management of COVID-19, the pace and speed and dedication which they've worked to prepare this island uh, for the virus has been amazing in the way in which 
the small number of cases we've had have been so professionally managed. It's testimony to their skill, their ability, and their dedication. A special word to our teachers, those charged with responsibility for bringing the new generations forward into what is an increasingly complex and challenging world. I doubt few of us will forget Anguilla Day 2020. Uh, inevitably, we'll recall and think about how traditional celebrations were muted, including today's events. But my special thanks to everybody that's managed to put together this quite remarkable uh, virtual endeavor. But I'm also sure and I hope that we reflect upon Anguilla Day 2020 as a time when Anguilla faced yet another mountain, but conquered it and was able to reach the Fertile Valley on the other side. And for me and Dina, Anguilla Day 2020 is also a very special one because it's the last one we'll celebrate here. Uh, not the last one we'll celebrate, I hope, but the last one we'll celebrate on Ireland. So once again, a very happy Anguilla Day to everybody. God bless Anguilla and let's hope for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I now call on the Honorable Leader of the Parliamentary Opposition, Ms. Pamela Van Webster, to present her Anguilla Day 2020 address. I, excuse me, want to associate with the protocol that's already been established. But um, greetings all, happy and good day in advance. I also want to say um, this morning as I opened my Bible, I was immediately drawn to the words of Isaiah, the prophet, in chapter 43 and verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. My people, I'm so grateful to God for his words that bring us much comfort in these trying times. This year, we celebrate Anguilla Day under the theme, History, Culture, Heritage. Know your identity, Anguilla 2020. Our 1967 revolution truly as the governor suggested, epitomizes the strength and spirit of the Anguilla people. It re represents a pinnacle moment in our political history, a major turning point in our development when men and women rolled up their sleeves and went to work to liberate a nation. I always maintain a posture of reverence and gratitude for our national heroes and heroines who took all the risks so that we can enjoy the fruit of their sacrifice. I remember today and always the men who were imprisoned in St. Kitts. I remember the women who faced the guns and the bullets. Their courage, their bravery must never escape us. They must forever be etched in our memory. Their stories repeated, forever told, and their works are archived and preserved for the benefit of the Anguillian yet to be born. We must work. We must work to ensure that those who participated in the revolution are properly recognized. 
And I'm particularly happy that today Leander Bryan has been recognized for his contribution in the revolution. Um, I remember as well the words of the Bible, you know, the first shall be last and the last shall be first because it started with him. And as beneficiaries of the revolution, we are duty bound to speak their names and to ensure that they are respected and cared for. Our identity as a nation and as a people rests in the spirit of the revolution, the bonds between us and the struggles we have overcome together. And Gwilians are a proud people, hardworking and with a strong sense of self-determination and the will to survive against all the odds. Yes, our people are brilliant, talented, and innovative. And I want to recognize those young persons behind those magical technolo technology this morning. Proud of you. Yes, and Gwilians ex excel at all levels of both public and private life. And when we are strong in our convictions, there is no obstacle that we cannot overcome. When we show love to each other, there is no wound that cannot be healed. When we are united, there is no limit to our potential and what we can achieve. So in this time of much hardship and uncertainty, let us hold strong to our faith in God, our love for each other, and the strength and determination of our forefathers. They work through the uncertainty and hardship. They face the challenge of governance. They face the challenge of development as well and build a strong and firm foundation on which we now stand. Now is the appointed time for us to transition from the revolution to our evolution applying the lessons from our past to secure a sustainable and prosperous future for all our people. This future beckons us, a future that can only be unlocked when we are united as one Anguilla. In the true spirit of the revolution, our honorees this year have demonstrated their commitment to our country and our people. Participants in the revolution and contributors to our social development, these honorees demonstrate the true meaning of service above self. And you know, Teacher Racina, Ursel, Young Wycliffe, on behalf of your father, my brother Leander, I want to say how grateful we are to you. We salute you, we appreciate you. You are an inspiration to us and we thank you. I also want to say, when I look at Nat Hodge and I remember the work that all of us rely on, Colville Petty and what he's contributed as a historian and other historians, Mary Hosford, we must lift and honor these persons for what they've contributed to Anguilla. With their, without them, many of the stories would have already been lost. We thank you, Nat. We thank you, our historians. So as we celebrate Anguilla Day 2020, let us focus on the things which bind us together rather than the things that tear us apart. Let us remember the very essence of who we are, the strength and determination that runs through our veins. Yes, 
Governor, you were right about that as well. The faith in our hearts that can move mountains and the cords that bind us together in love and unity. Let us remember that we are one Anguilla. We are one, one love, one family, one. In closing, I leave you with the words of encouragement from our Heavenly Father in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God bless you. God bless you all. And may God bless Anquilla always. Thank you very much. The Premier of Anguilla, who is also the Minister of Finance, Economic Development, Investment, Commerce, Tourism, and Information Technology, Mr. Victor Banks, will now grace the podium to give us his address. Mr. Banks. Good morning, and happy Anguilla Day. Fellow Anguillians, my people, these celebrations marking the 53rd anniversary of our revolution are framed against the backdrop of a coronavirus pandemic which has impacted the entire world. It represents an unprecedented medical phenomenon that transcends the normal fallout from such diseases and has moved into the realm of probable financial and economic disaster. Our homeland continues to be blessed by the grace of God to have been able, been, have been able to avoid the more horrific manifestations of this virus as experienced in other countries across the globe. We have no way of predicting what the future may hold for our island, but we trust that he will continue to keep us safe even as this ferocious storm passes us by. This happens to be my sixth Anguilla Day in this term of office as Chief Minister and Premier. And I am grateful to the people of Anglo for this opportunity. I'm the only holder of this office to have had the privilege to preside over six Anguilla Day celebrations in a single term of office. However, it goes without saying that this one is different. It is the first virtual Anguilla Day official ceremony. And I want to thank the very creative staff in the protocol division of the ministry, as well as their team of support for making this possible. I must also acknowledge the sterling efforts of the Anguilla Christian Council and the Evangelical Association in conducting our National Day of Prayer in the midst of the restrictions occasioned by the safety requirements of the COVID-19 pandemic. Their theme, and I quote, we cry out to thee, O Lord, unquote, speaks to the strong faith that we have as a people in his promise to deliver us from the most traumatic circumstances of life. And a spirit of gratitude and praise that pervaded that fellowship warmed many hearts at the grounds of the St. Mary's Pro Cathedral. And those listening and viewing the rally 
on the various broadcast media. We were truly blessed. A 53rd anniversary is not normally considered a milestone year, but it provides the same opportunity for reflection and appreciation of our history and our heritage. In this vein, I consider the theme for this year's celebrations to be most appropriate when I quote, history, culture, and heritage, know your identity, Anguilla Day 2020. We have indeed come a long way because of the resolve of our forebears to stay the course and to achieve our goals we must continue to move forward ever mindful of the blessings that have brought us this far. I was able to have my usual inspirational chat around this time with my friend and the last surviving leader of the early struggle, the Honorable John Bob Rogers. However, on this occasion, it was on phone from his hospital bed where he was in recovery from a recent surgery. But those circumstances did not diminish the flow of his thoughts about the future of Anguilla, flavored by his tremendous and meticulous recollections of the revolutionary journey. The one thing that Bob wanted me to say as he paraphrased a quote that he attributes to the late Sir Winston Churchill was, and I quote, whatever he did, he did it for Anguilla, not for himself. He therewith admonished me to speak to all aspiring political candidates to have a similar view of their decision as they participate in the political process. But I will not use this Anguilla Day address as a platform to launch my government's political campaign or to boast of our achievements over the past five years. But I will celebrate a few changes that have been achieved under our watch that acknowledge the theme of this Anguilla Day separation, that of knowing and feeling our identity wherever in the world we find ourselves. Firstly, the amendment made to the Constitution to refer to all people as Anguillians. And secondly, to extend the privilege of Anguillian status to grandchildren born outside of Anguilla in recognition of the fact that all people have had to travel abroad for many noble reasons. We believe that these dignifying changes would have made our forebears proud. And so we too are proud to have them in place as another historic stride in cementing our identity and recognizing the rich heritage that made us a special and unique people. This also brings up another important evolution in our quest for self-determination, namely the opportunity created by another amendment to our Constitution during our watch to expand the participation of the people in the government process by increasing the number of elected members in the House of Assembly by more than 50 percent. It makes this a historic election, 40 years after the introduction of the Westminster form of parliamentary democracy to our island. All people can now elect a wider cadre of persons to represent them in government. But I must not avoid mentioning the fact that we are now entering an active election cycle even as we celebrate together the virtues of unity and love as a means of advancing as a nation 
proud of our heritage and our identity. That reality should lead us to display an attitude of mutual respect as we seek the support of the people we hope to lead. It comes down to speaking truth to power, as the saying goes, but also by showing respect for the lofty offices we seek, by clothing ourselves with decency and appropriate conduct. I believe that we can use these reflections on anguility to remind us of what is expected of us as good leaders. And I will never be wary of making this exhortation every Anguilla Day. That Anguilla Day should always be a day to preach love, not hate and retribution. Not about division, but of unity. Not to celebrate with arrogance, but to reflect with humility. Not a day to accentuate our shortcomings with despair, but rather our successes with hope. A day to look forward, not a day to be trapped in a time warp of the past. It is a day to pray and hope for leaders ready to be bold and courageous, yet always remembering to be compassionate and caring. Let me take this opportunity to commend all the Anguilla Day honorees, past and present, especially those here today, for their sterling contribution to our island in so many different ways. We salute you this day. Let me also pay homage to all past leaders, especially chief ministers, the late Honorable James Ronald Webster, the father of the nation, the late Sir Emma Gums, the Honorable Hubert Benjamin Hughes, with whom I had the privilege to speak with yesterday as he recovers from his illness in a foreign country, and the Honorable Osborne Burlington Fleming for their service to the people of this, our patrimony. Having said all of the foregoing, I want to take this opportunity for the first time on Anguilla Day to salute all those brave young men by name who on June 9, 1967, 53 years ago, traveled to St. Kitts on a speedboat on an uncertain mission with what could have had been a perilous outcome to demonstrate their willingness to stand up to defend our struggle for self-determination against a hostile administration across the seas 70 miles away from home. Their mission cannot be erased from our history, and we have certainly passed the time for any possible recriminations. Even so, I am moved to salute them for their courage and determination. Mr. Valentine Bobby Ruan, Mr. Lemuel Phillips, Mr. Ruben Ruby Gums, Mr. Collins Jesse Hodge, Mr. Oliver Shaft Gums, Mr. Wilkin Smith, Mr. Albert Gums, Mr. Mitchell Del Prado Harrigan, Mr. Toddville Harrigan, Mr. Connell Harrigan, Mr. Henderson Smith, and Mr. Randolph Richardson. We salute them this day. Most of these brave men have passed on, but I want to us to remember their sacrifice as a living testimony to our heritage of indomitable courage and strong resolve. This is indeed an aspect of the Anguillian identity of which we speak today. Their date in history is June 10th, 1967. And we as a government have decided that they should be adequately recognized in a substantial way for their role in our struggle for self-determination. And this year, 2020, 
must be that year that they are accorded some special token of our appreciation and gratitude. As I leave, let me quote from my friend, the Honorable John Bob Rogers' favorite idol, the late Winston Spencer Churchill, when he said, and I quote, the farther backward you can look, the further forward you are likely to see, unquote. In other words, let us remain faithful to our theme, and I quote, history, <clears throat> culture, and heritage. Know your identity. And let us continue onward, united, to build our nation proud, strong, and free. May God bless all of you, and may God bless Anguilla. I thank you all very much for your kind attention. Premier Banks. Premier Banks will now be joined by Miss Anguilla 2019-2020, Miss Latonya Mossington to present the awards to this year's honorees. Our first honoree is Mr. Leander Bull as he's popularly known, Casmi Bryan, for the Anguilla Revolution. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Colville Petty and Nat Hodge in their book titled, Anguilla's Battle for Freedom, 1967 to 1969, wrote, Whatever the Anguillian militants may have endured, they succeeded in what they had set out to accomplish, the breakup of the Queen Show. By doing so, they showed their opposition to statehood in real and practical terms. Leander, popularly known as Bull, was one of the teenage militants from Island Harbor who became known for his prowess during the Anguilla Revolution. He is touted as a revolutionary foot soldier. Bull was one of the two teenage boys who cut the wires to a portable electric generator to disrupt the Statehood Queen show on 4th February, 1967. This was one of the most significant precursors to the Anguilla Revolution. He, along with Sinric Fogel Webster, then stood guard and engaged in stone and bottle throwing attacks at the Valley Secondary School and at the police officers who responded with tear gas. He was a sailor on the MV Oceanic and was involved in bringing the firearms from St. Thomas for the Re Anguilla Revolution, where he eventually hid them at Captain's Bay. Leander also guarded Anguilla's ports and beaches from any invasion by St. Kitts. Bull is renowned for his knowledge as a fisherman and diver. The highlight of Leander's diving experience came when, while on a diving expedition in 1989, he discovered the remains of the 18th century Spanish wreck, El Buen Consejo. Leander was an integral part of the Anguilla Maritime Research, AMR, a partnership launched to ensure the monitoring and management of the shipwreck site as an underwater museum. He's also known for his boat building skills and his expert fish pot building. Mr. Leander Casme Bryan, our 2020 honoree for on this Anguilla Day for his involvement in the Anguilla Revolution.
Our next honoree is Mr. Wycliffe Augustus Rohan Richardson, who we honor posthumously. His son, Rennick, is here. Wycliffe Augustus Rohan Richardson, affectionately known as Judge, was a lifelong resident of North Side Anguilla. He received his education at the Valley Boys School and later the Valley Secondary School. After receiving his formative education, Mr. Richardson received training in radio broadcasting and journalism in various parts of the Caribbean. He was a member of the Anguilla Public Service until his retirement in 2009. During his service to the government and people of Anguilla, his appointments included press secretary, news editor, acting director of information and broadcasting, telecommunications officer, ship's liaison officer, and coordinator of disaster preparedness. Judge was an executive member of the Anguilla Cricket Association. Being an ardent Methodist, he was a member of the Ebenezer Men's Fellowship the Ebenezer and Maranatha choirs, and up until the time of his passing, president of the Leeward Islands Methodist Men's Commission. As a veteran broadcaster and journalist, he founded and owned Anguilla Television, ATV, which he managed and operated until he transitioned on, 20, on 2nd December, 2019. ATV filled a very important function and is greatly missed in Anguilla's, Anguilla's media scene. Judge was a passionate journalist, sportsman, churchman, and an outspoken person with bold views on patriotism, openness, and excellence. His presence on the landscape and involvement in Anguilla's development is forever etched. Mr. Wycliffe Augustus Rohan Richardson, better known as Judge, posthumously honored for social development. Our next honoree is Mrs. Rosina Brooks, who is being honored for her contribution to social development. Since her youth, Rosina Brooks, nay Lake, has loved acquiring knowledge and developing skills in many areas with the aim of helping people to realize their potential. With this zeal, she began her teaching career at the Valley Secondary School in September 1969. She pursued studies in English, history, and music, 1974 to 1978, and teacher training, 1993 to 1994, at the University of the West Indies. Curriculum Studies, 1998 to 1999 at the University of London. Protocol and Etiquette, September 20, 2006 at the Protocol School of Washington. She attended several workshops, seminars, and conferences pertaining to teaching and learning, leadership, and counseling, among other areas. For a few years, she was an assessor for the CSEC English A and CPEA examinations organized by the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC. She is also a long-standing member of the Virginia USA-based Body of Professional Educators, ASCD. As an educator, Mrs. Brooks has served as an English teacher, head of the English department at the Valley Secondary School, VSS, now the Albina Lakehouse Comprehensive School, ALHCS, and education officer curriculum. In the community, Mrs. Brooks is a Sunday school teacher, a leader in the St. Mary's Junior Choir, 
a member of the Anglican Church Women Association, and the patron of Soroptimus International Anguilla. Since 1988, Mrs. Brooks has touched the lives of many children as a scout, Cub Scout leader. Without a doubt, Mrs. Brooks' passion is teaching, learning, and assisting people to achieve their best and to become decent, responsible, and God-fearing citizens of their countries. Besides Anguilla, she has taught in Barbados, St. Martin, and St. Thomas, United States, Virgin Islands. She continues to help persons, including those referred by community-minded individuals, the church, and Department of Social Development in any way that she can. In 2006, Mrs. Brooks founded Spring High, an education institute dedicated to helping students of all ages improve their written and communication skills and prepare for regional and international examinations. Her love for community and her belief that everyone should be given the opportunity to advance motivates her to teach students pro bono and to voluntarily offer etiquette and protocol classes to non-governmental organizations and government departments on request. Mrs. Rosina Brooks, 2020 Honoree, Social Development. Our fourth and final honoree for this morning is Mrs. Ursel I. Webster Brooks, who is being honored for her involvement in social development. <laughs> Ursel I. Webster Brooks was born and raised at Stony Ground, Anguilla. She received her education at the Valley Girls School from 1958 to 1965 and the Valley Secondary School from 1966 to 1971. From 1973 to 1975, she attended the Mourn Fortune Technical College in St. Lucia. She has also pursued management studies at the University of the West Indies Challenge Program and a ger geriatric course at the Anguilla Community College. She served in the Anguilla Public Service from 1971 to 2006 in various posts, including juvenile court assessor at the magistrate's court and schools and social welfare officer. She is also known as one of the founding tutors of typewriting on Anguilla. Mrs. Webster Brooks is a community activist. She can be described as a champion for the rights and welfare of women, children, families, employees, and senior citizens. Her community involvement spans a multiplicity of organizations, including the Sunday School of St. Mary's Pro Cathedral, the Anglican Church Women's Association, St. Mary's Mother's Union, Anguilla Christian Council, Anguilla Diabetic Association, Anguilla Red Cross, Anguilla National Council of Women, Sir Optimus International of Anguilla, and the Anguilla Retired Persons Association. She holds the honor of being the first female president of the Anguilla Civil Service Association, 1987 to 1991. Ursil is especially known to the residents of the Miriam Gums Senior Citizens Home and several other senior citizens who look forward to receiving her care and attention on a daily and weekly basis. She's humble and steadfast in all her pursuits for the benefit of Anguilla and all who cross her path. Mrs. Ursil I. Webster Brooks, 2020 Honoree, Social Development. We congrat congratulate our honorees.
and their families and behalf of all of Anguilla, of us here gathered and all Anguillians, I thank you for your contribution. And today we remember Comrade Wycliffe for his contribution. Thank you, Mr. Banks and Latanya. We have now come to the close of this morning's ceremony. And I close by saying, where'er you walk, walk good. Stay safe and be well. <laughs>